Welcome back everyone. Today is a bit of a different one. It's a long video because it's a series of hunts from my most recent trip. I went down to the Isle of Wight with my family and for those of you who don't know, the Isle of Wight is a little island on the south coast of England. It's home to a range of sediments ranging from the lower Cretaceous, these terrestrial and marine ones on the south coast that you can see here, through its giant upper Cretaceous chalk cliffs and then into the Eocene and Oligocene, which is after the dinosaurs. Uh, and we find some interesting mammals as well as crocodiles and turtles, things you don't normally associate with England. Uh, whilst I was there, I visited a few little locations, including Brystone Bay, Compton Beach, which is really famous for its dinosaurs. I uh, went around to Shanklin and had a look for some dinosaurs there, and then jumped up into the Oligocene at Fort Victoria. So there's a diverse set of hunts, uh, not always the most productive because hunting for dinosaurs and vertebrates is incredibly difficult, but I hope you enjoy. Good morning everyone, it's about 5, 20, 5 30 in the morning uh, and I'm just down on the beach at Brystone Bay down in Isle of Wight. Uh, my first time in the Isle of Wight, uh, but I know this area is supposed to have uh, potentially dinosaur fossils, crocodile bits, fish bits, plants, all sorts of Cretaceous goodies. Uh, so I'm going to be walking from uh, Brystone, or at least near Brystone, uh, along uh, the beach today. Uh, I know it's still dark, it should get lighter as the day goes on uh, and we'll be able to do some better fossil hunting. Um, but I'm just going to be scouring and looking and see what we can find. Uh, there we go. First little bit of a fossil, uh, so it's just a piece of wood, um, or at least a coal from a piece of wood. Um, but it's got some pyrite on both sides, so you know it's definitely not a modern thing. Uh, the uh, south coast always seems to have better pyrite than I saw on the north coast, uh, so I quite like it. But it will be staying on the beach, and we're looking for things that tend to be black, I'm going to say based on this. So another piece of wood just down there, and uh, we'll be checking out a lot of those, hoping that some of them might be a bit of nicer one. These white things uh, are not fossils, these are modern, uh, but they come from cuttlefish, and so are therefore related to things like octopus and squid, uh, and even the bellum knights uh, that we find in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Um, these are the internal shells, so much like you find the fossils that look a lot like bullets. Uh, this is the equivalent in modern cuttlefish. Uh, and it's one of those weird things, they are mollusks, so they're related to all the other shellfish. Um, but it may not appear like that because they don't have external shells. What they have done over time is they've evolved and put their shells on the inside. And so you find modern examples all over the beaches. So down on the beach, uh, the light's getting much better as you can tell with the sun coming up. Uh, so I thought I'd kind of give you a quick bit of the geology, is the majority of the cliffs that you see from about that headfall in there coming around, this is all mudstones as part of the Wealden supergroup. The Wealden is uh, Cretaceous in age, it's where most of the dinosaurs in the UK come from. It's supposed to be something like a, a rivery, marshy uh, environment, and that's why we get a lot of the fossils here. Uh, but when we look a little further along, you'll see there's another section of cliff right here that's quite white in colour. And this is all Cretaceous uh, chalks, and this is actually uh, how the Cretaceous got its name. From Latin, Creta is, is the translation of chalk. And so the Cretaceous, the last age of the dinosaurs, the non-avian dinosaurs, is named after these white cliffs that we find uh, across the Cretaceous, uh, at least in Europe. Another very early morning start uh, down at Compton Bay this time, so just a bit uh, west of Brystone where it started, didn't have much luck. Uh, so, to give you an idea where we are, those are the cliffs, the big white cliffs that we could see from Brystone. Uh, these sandy cliffs and muddy cliffs that come along, uh, these are the ones that have the dinosaur stuff in them. Uh, and I'm told, just around this corner and onto these little headlands is where you find the dinosaur footprints. Uh, we'll go have a look and see what we can find and hopefully find a bit of bone or two. Um, but we'll just have to have a look and see. I think this might be the first one, this thing on top. 
might be the first dinosaur footprint. I'm told they get very big, they're big iguanodon footprints and they have this three third appearance but instead of like the theropod ones which look just like three fingers, they're kind of big fleshy lobes. Um, so I think this might be one. Uh, but I'm hoping we'll find a more clear one. I know there's some very big clear ones uh, around. So we'll see if we can find some of those. Some more nice fossil bits of wood. Uh, bone will probably be similar in colour but will have a very different texture. Uh, so we will put this back down and see what we can keep finding. Was not sure about the first one. I'm definitely sure about this one. We've got one toe there second toe in the middle and the third toe there with a big fleshy pad. Uh, that is a lovely iguanodontian footprint. Show one of these big ornithopods, one of the big uh, duck-billed dinosaurs. Uh, and to give you an idea of scale, that's my foot. So it's a big old chunker of a footprint. Uh, all of the footprints down at Compton Bay are protected, uh, so you can't take them off even if you could carry something that big. Uh, and they're washing out of this material here, uh, this bedrock. Uh, it's also protected. Uh, but it's lovely that they're still here and we can see them and show them to all of you. Well, there's one footprint, there's often many more. So this is another one looking at that. Hopefully you can get your eyes in. Uh, so slightly orange uh, based on what's growing on it relative to the rest of the rock. It's kind of funny how different these boulders are. So there's one here with a beautiful footprint in it. And then right there, there's another one. Uh, and they tend to stick out because they've obviously been here long enough that they're growing algae. Whereas if you look at the rocks in and around them, uh, they're seaweed, but they're not growing algae in the same way. Uh, so I suspect, without having walked over to a lot of them, if you look, there's a bunch of boulders that have all got uh, algae growing on them. They're so bright green. I suspect a lot of them will be these same dinosaur footprints. Just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at, this is the sort of pebbles and everything I'm walking over. There's lots and lots of them on the beach. Uh, I'm just following near where the water's just been washing it all out. Uh, you'll see there's lots of little black things that look interesting and I'm stopping to look at far too many. I suspect uh, the vast majority of it will be wood. Uh, most of it fossil, some modern uh, from things like charcoal. Uh, but what makes it, or what makes dinosaur bone different uh, that's going to be down to the texture in particular. So a dinosaur bone, or bone as a whole, uh, tends to have an interesting texture that's very different to wood. Wood tends to just be nice little layers uh, of bark uh, stacked on top of each other. So it's a pretty standard smooth uh, texture all the way along. Whereas bone, uh, there's a top couple of layers that look very much like wood, but once you get inside you start seeing a honeycomb pattern and that's where bone stops being what's called the outer cortical bone and starts becoming the sort of the inner trabecular bone which is what the honeycomb is and so that's the giveaway that you found a piece of bone and not just a piece of wood uh, and that's what I'm looking for but as you see millions and millions of pebbles uh, and I'm looking for one one honeycomb pebble amongst all of this uh, so I'm not optimistic it must be said Brystone Bay was very much like this but even more pebbly uh, and no success, so we'll just keep looking uh, and hope. There are some other fossils you can find here, and the National Trust, who own the land, uh, suggests that you can find fossil teeth, and I imagine you can. They'd be Iguanodontin, probably, uh, and very rare. Um, but what they describe them as is they look like teeth, but bigger. Which made me chuckle. Um, so yeah, they do actually just kind of look like very big teeth. Uh, but there'll be a different shape to the ones that you're used to seeing if you're looking at your teeth or your baby teeth. Uh, but based on how popular this area is and how rare bone is, I imagine finding a tooth here would be incredibly lucky. Uh, at least during the middle of summer when everyone is here. Uh, which is when we're here. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. I've just picked up this bit of black material that's fossil, but I'm not sure if it's bone or wood, and this is one of the challenges. So if you look at the texture along the top, it looks very woody, but the fact that it opens out into this sort of more porous material, that kind of looks a little honeycomby, might just be a little piece of bone. Uh, if it is, it's not very good, as you can tell. It's pretty nondescript in shape. 
uh, probably a chunk of a much larger bone. Uh, so from the one I wasn't sure if it is bone, this is bone. Uh, you can see that honeycomb texture through it on both sides. So it's a very scrappy piece of dinosaur bone, uh, but it is bone. Uh, so I'm very pleased to have got that. And that's just out of this little pile of rocks here, uh, which we'll, we'll slowly focus in on. Uh, it's still fairly early in the morning, so focusing is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but I'm going to have a look a bit more around here because I picked up my other little scrappy bit, I think is bone, uh, just a little further down the beach. So maybe there's a bit more here to be had. Just enjoying the bits of wood uh, as I go along. You can see uh, this one has had pyrite basically fill in all the layers in the rings. Uh, and so you get beautiful texture to it. Ooh, nice piece of wood. A uh, couple of bits in fact. So you've got one layer here separated by pirate from the next. Another bit of pirate and another layer going the other direction. Uh, pretty. As you can tell there's some dogs in the background not agreeing with each other. Uh, It's about 7.30 in the morning in the beautiful little town of Shanklin. Uh, we are going to be walking towards the cliffs over there, which is where uh, the same Cretaceous rocks are exposed, which have potentially dinosaur remains coming out of them. Uh, we are midsummer, and there's a bunch of beach defences, so I don't believe we're in a lot of the uh, previous discussions. Um, so we'll see whether or not there's anything here. Uh, failing that, we're going to head to the Dinosaur Isle Museum straight after this, so it'll be a good little time. Two things are from this site. It's uh, mollusks and dinosaurs. And there's the mollusks. So we've got the first sort of shells uh, coming through in some of these big blocks. Uh, and much like the Jurassic Coast, there's obviously the big old landslides coming from through old cliffs, so we're going to try and keep our distance uh, and be very aware of that risk. It may not look it, the weather is gorgeous, but that actually sometimes makes these cliffs even more dangerous as they dry out, they crack, uh, and all of those shales and soft, very saturated muds uh, start to fall apart. And so we'll just keep an eye on it as we go. And like with uh, the other sides, lots and lots of wood scattered through this as well. Uh, so this is the colour of stuff we're going to be looking for. I suspect uh, dinosaur bone is going to be dark uh, towards the black colours. Uh, and again we're looking for that honeycomb texture just to make sure we found an actual piece of bone and not a piece of wood. You can actually see in some of these cliffs uh, these little shelly layers as well. So, uh, these are what was told that was here and this is in the green sand. Uh, we'll have to just keep looking. Ooh, big chunk of loose shell. These really ugly, massive oysters might actually take it. It's ugly, but it's huge. Had a cliff section which isn't quite so steep, still not ideal, uh, but just want to point out that someone's had a go at digging out uh, a set of oysters, uh, really large crofia block, but this is also a illegal. Uh, and be very dangerous because of the cliff overhang. Uh, so don't do it. There are some gorgeous pieces of wood around now. Uh, this one you can hopefully on the camera see all the grain in it as well. There's a big old chunk and it's got the sand from a source rock on the back. It's nice. I'm thinking about taking it but uh, whilst I'm still walking out it might just stay on the beach. I hadn't realised they'd come so far around that we start getting ammonite shells. So that's seeing one of those big grey blocks, and there's quite a few of them knocking around. So I just have to keep an eye out. I hadn't realised there'd be ammonites potentially here. So I reached my turnaround point uh, at the end of my time and tide. Uh, so I'm going to start wandering back. No real vertebrate fossils to be said today, uh, and only a little bit so far from the Cretaceous across all the hunts. Uh, but that's kind of the joys of fossil hunting for invertebrate material. It's a lot rarer than uh, invertebrates, a lot rarer than things like ammonites that you get on the Yorkshire coast. So it's not surprising that you don't necessarily get a lot, especially in midsummer and uh, 
there haven't been a lot of falls, and a lot of people are fossil hunting. So it's not a surprise, there isn't that much around. Uh, but that's the way it goes. Uh, it's not that dissimilar actually to fossil hunting in uh, a lot of other countries where you just go and if you're looking for new spots, you might spend days not finding much. But I've got a dinosaur bone from England now, so I'm doing all right. Uh, can't complain too much about that. Uh, so I'm gonna wander back across what can only be described as continued beautiful coastline uh, and I'm going to see if I can find any on the last uh, walk back uh, and tomorrow uh, I'm hoping to either be diving into the Cretaceous marine sediments or into the Oligocene uh, terrestrial sediments so some stuff that's either far younger uh, if I'm in the Oligocene than this or going into the marine sediments which is going to be hopefully some ammonites so we'll just have to see what uh, what I decide tomorrow so another piece of wood, lots of them, uh, but I want to show these bits off, which may not look like much there, and there's another set of them up here. Um, these are actually burrows or borings from uh, some animals that were alive in the past, about 120 million years ago in the Cretaceous, uh, and we have the same sort of animals still alive doing exactly the same today, uh, when there's a piece of wood or in fact any structure left in the water for a long period of time, these animals will get to them uh, and start digging holes and uh, that's exactly what's happened here. These holes have then filled in with uh, sediment, some sand uh, and now you see them as little openings on the top. Uh, so this is quite cool, this is 120 million year old uh, evidence that these pieces of wood were floating around in the sea for quite a while exposed um, to these animals able to burrow and bore into them. Good morning everyone, it's a bit of a dreary morning here uh, in the Isle of Wight, I've had rain all night, so hopefully there's some things to be found. Today we're at Fort Vic, uh, so we're up in the northwest corner of the Isle of Wight in the Oligocene, uh, so we're looking at sort of 23 to 30-ish million years old, um, and the hope is that we might find something here. Uh, we didn't have a lot of luck in the Cretaceous sediments down on the south coast, uh, which are about 120 million years old in the Isle of Wight. Um, but here we can find uh, potentially lots of different things. So we're looking at uh, crocodiles and turtles are the common things. We might find mammal remains. Uh, I'm expecting maybe some bits of shell and some teeth, but we will see if we can find some bone or anything else. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, so we'll have to see what we can find here at Fort Vic. Can you spot the fossil? So this is what we're looking for. Little tiny bits, potentially. Uh, of fossil material. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There we go. So you can see that texture on top. That's what gives it away. Uh, I think it's turtle, but it might be a bit of croc scoot. Uh, so that's the first little bit. Uh, I will have to get a little bag out for all of these. Hopefully there'll be lots more. Another little bit right there. We will keep collecting them and see if we can find more. Unfortunately, these giant rafts of seaweed seem to be covering a lot of the productive layer of uh, foreshore, uh, but we'll just have to keep an eye out. The other thing there seems to be an awful lot of is this red shelly material. Uh, so lots and lots of little shells in it. As you can see, absolutely packed. Um, there's some much bigger bits knocking around. I mean, there's bits there and there. Uh, but a little one like that, perfect for my pocket. And uh, We'll keep looking for some more birds. These layers have some really nice colours. So we've got these ready purple uh, layers with yellow. And you go up just a touch and we're in these sort of light blue. And there's obviously some shells in all of this. Uh, and all of this muddy slide that's coming down. Uh, but it's some beautiful material. Uh, obviously very, very rich uh, in shells. It's supposed to be when the Isle of Wight was a a shallow swampy area, they describe it as like the current Florida Everglades, uh, which is why there's loads of crocs and turtles, um, but also lots of the shelly uh, aquatic material uh, that we're finding. A couple of more little bits, piece of turtle shell by the looks of this one here, 
indulge with a scrappy bone. Uh, it's a bit hard going and uh, I'm going to head back going very slowly and just seeing if I can find anything else. It is very slow going to find all these little bits. Uh, I'm hoping that because I'm finding all these little bits of shell, like this, this one's actually not bad because it's midline, so a bit of what looks like vertebra. Um, that means I'll find something good if there's something here to be found. You might just see that I've moved this bit out the sand because I saw the texture sticking through. So that there looks like crocodile osteoderm, crocodile scoot. Well, so this one may not look like much. This is actually a complete scoot. You can see by the fact it's pretty much symmetrical. Uh, and it's actually, I think, the nuchal one, so the one right behind the head. Spot the fossil. It's getting a bit easier, uh, although it's still not easy. Uh, this one is actually quite a big chunk. Nice texture on it too. Yeah, lovely texture. And you see hopefully the bone section there. And this might be my star find of today. Little crocodile tooth. It's a little beauty. But it's tiny. Hopefully we can find a couple more. Find a little spot that I think might be productive. So we'll have a good scour of this. You didn't see the first one, but here's your chance to find the second one. It's a teeny tiny crocodile tooth. Or the tip of a bigger one. But I'm going for a teeny tiny crocodile tooth. Did you see it right here? So it's a beautiful little crocodile tooth. But absolutely tiny. And another nice little find here, a little vertebra. It needs a bit of a clean, a bit of sand on it, but nice little vert. Not far left to go in the hunt, uh, basically just slowly working along these edges. Uh, but I've got a nice little bag of turtle and crocodile bone. I've got my other bag with my couple of crocodile teeth. Uh, but I thought it'd be a fun little anecdote I could talk about was um, in India, when we were fossil hunting there across New Year's, uh, we were basically killing time until midnight and as part of that we were playing poker with uh, lots of fossil turtle shell and I ended up with nearly all of it because I'd had a really good run of luck and so I became called Turtle Bags uh, as part of the trip. Um, which I got reminded by by a friend, uh, Thomas Halliday, who's written a fantastic book called Otherlands uh, about past life on Earth. Um, and he was there as uh, one of the people I was gambling against uh, with our little turtle shell. Obviously all the turtle shell ended up back in proper museum collections, didn't end up with me just because I won the poker. Uh, but it just made me chuckle when I was thinking about it. Off the beach, I uh, thought this might be the last day hunting, but tomorrow uh, plans got changed, so I've got an extra day, or at least an extra morning of hunting. Not sure yet where I'm going to go, if it's going to be Oligocene and maybe a bit further along, which is supposed to be more productive, but hard to get to. I'll go back to somewhere like Compton Bay and see if we can find some more dinosaur stuff. Uh, I'll just have to wait and see. Uh, back at uh, Compton Bay, not finding a lot, but uh, just pick this up. Obviously, crab claw. Uh, but looking at the inside, it looks like it's flint preserved. So this might have actually come out of the, uh, the white cliffs, the chalk, uh, quite a way up the beach. Uh, we'll keep it because it's the only thing we found beside those footprints, which we can't take home today. So keep this one. Mm -hmm. 